Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to Dizzle's Arcade. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Kwanba 2009 Arcade. Really looking forward to this one. Super excited to kind of get a little bit more hands on and go through the full review. So make sure you stay tuned. This is going to be a good one. So join me today as we unbox, go through a little bit of the setup, take a peek at the design as well as the build quality, some of the features, and the performance of the Kwanba 2009 Arcade. So if you are familiar with Kwanba as a brand, you might be familiar with their uh, obsidian sticks, their dragon stick. Um, they, they have a newer one uh, called the Titan. There's a few more as well that they offer a varying range, but this one interests me quite a bit more for its sort of unique style and full table desk setup, basically. All right, so as far as what you get here, you're starting off with two packages. First, your base package. Now, this is all going to be your heavy stuff that kind of makes up the frame of this thing. Uh, what you've got here is essentially two side pieces, a top piece, a back bar, and your bottom piece where you can, you know, put consoles and stuff like that, as well as a nice, heavy, super duper heavy duty monitor mount that goes on to the back. You've got two different screw types, so there's not a whole bunch of variation here. You don't have to worry too much about that. You've got some zip ties. Of course, you've got multiple USB cables to hook it up to multiple devices. Very cool as well. And included Phillips screwdrivers. So that's always nice. And in the second package here, you're going to get your actual arcade control deck itself, the whole panel, whether that's the one player or the two player version. In my case, two player. We've got some joystick covers here. It's going to include some octagonal gates if you want to change those out. We've also got some hand screws. If you decide to flip this up, you want to get a look at the underside. This super clean wiring. Change the buttons or the stick, as well as these nice rubberized feet. They hold up really well on nice flat surfaces. And it didn't seem to move when I had it on a short carpet, so that seems to work pretty good too. We've got these side holders for throwing whatever remote control for your TV or just whatever you've got laying around that you need somewhere to put. They can go in there, no problem. As far as build quality goes, this thing is solid. It seems to be made out of steel and some of the parts, some kind of sheet metal. It's all coated here and powder coated or whatever this is. I don't really know. It's got a good texture to it. Seems to be nice. It's got a good design and definitely has a premium feel to it. So it's got that classic arcade vibe. Now to sort of reinforce this, I let some people who aren't fighting game enthusiasts, you know, they don't play a lot of arcade, let them hop on, mash on this thing a bit, play some Tekken ball, and kind of just go crazy. And this thing did not budge. It held up really, really well and kind of seemed to stay put. You know, the rubberized feet stayed in place, didn't move, didn't budge. Yeah, you're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna have many problems with this thing moving. Now we've talked a lot about how durable this thing is, and it really does stand out above the rest as being heavy duty, sort of an enthusiast level desk table setup, if you will. That being said, we haven't really discussed some of these other things here, like some of this cool hardware we've got. We've got this PCB in here that houses two additional PCBs, one for player one and one for player two. And in addition to that, you could pop these out, reconfigure these up with Brooks Universal Fight Boards, the Retro Boards, whatever you want, link these in together and still have them come out of this same, in my case, single cable. Now, that being said, you've also got this other part here on the board where you can toggle this switch and that is going to change over to the four if you decide you want to hook it up to multiple devices, different PCs, an additional console. Of course, that's all going to depend on the boards you put in here. 
as you see here, very clean cabling, very well managed. Nice sleeve here, going off to the Quamba Gravity silent buttons, as well as the silent joysticks. These things are really cool, but at first they were slightly off-putting to those who are used to using sort of, you know, Sanwa sticks or any other sort of buttons that have that clicky, tactile feedback sort of thing. And it's just ever so slight, but it's there. That being said, after playing with this for a couple of hours, I didn't even really notice it. And I noticed the sound even less uh, than you would obviously a lot less. It is, it is really, really quiet. And that's gonna go a long way for those who don't really care much for sort of the loud clicky noises that come from most conventional joysticks or even hitboxes for that matter. All right, so if we take a look here above the standard eight button setup, we see a little panel. We've got home, select, turbo with two fire modes, as well as a couple additional buttons. One labeled click, which I assume is for the PlayStation 5. If you've got a PlayStation 5 compatible PCB in this, that'll probably link up to that. Click, no problem. You've got your additional buttons in here. Your switches for your analog, your D-pad, your left and right stick, whatever you want to have set up. As well, over here, near the start button, we're going to pass this up. We've got the actual switcher. This is how you're going to switch modes or switch consoles, depending on the setup. You've got a lock here as well, which is going to prevent any of this stuff here along the top from being pressed so you don't get disqualified during competitive play if you're playing online because you won't be dragging this bad boy to any tournaments. Uh, that being said, I definitely hope to see somebody dragging one of these to a tournament. Let's see it. Now, after all that, I've spent some time on this thing, and I have to say, it is absolutely incredible. It certainly does what it sets out to do. It's a premium, super solid, heavy duty arcade experience for enthusiasts or someone who's just looking for that realistic arcade feel. You're gonna get it here. And with all that being said, we're gonna take a look at some pros and cons before we conclude with my final thoughts as well as my overall score for the Quanba 2009 Arcade. All right, let's take a look at some of the pros of the Quanba 2009 Arcade. And the first thing here is the build quality. This thing has got a lot of weight to it. It feels super solid, super durable, just like old arcades. And the next thing on the pros list, we've got those quiet Quanba Gravity silent buttons and joysticks. They keep things nice and silent. It's definitely a huge difference between your Sanwa buttons or your Crown Sam Duxa buttons and those other joysticks as well. It is definitely a great alternative if you don't want to disturb those around you. And of course, when we're talking about pros, we have to talk about that connectivity. From one to four devices, depending on what you need, you've got the switcher here at your fingertips, right on the control panel, hop between different consoles, multiple PCs, whatever it is that you need for your setup, connectivity, it's here. And we can't talk about pros without talking about how customizable this thing is. Of course, you've got the ability to swap these buttons out relatively easy. This part hinges up here. You've got access to the underside, the connections here, all these harnesses. As well, we've got to talk about those dual PCBs that are set up in there. You drop a couple of Brook Universal Fight boards in there, and you've got four connections, one to the Switch, one to the PlayStation, one to the Xbox, 
you are good to go. You don't need to go pulling that USB plug in and out and swapping that up to a bunch of different devices. You're good to go. And of course, these panels here, the USB switcher being at your fingertips here, as well as the ability to lock it all out for competitive play without interruption is ultra nice. And now let's take a look at some of the cons of this thing. It's bulky. These materials make it heavy and it might take up more space than you'd expect given that it can house a monitor mounted as well. I've seen some people putting like 20 something inch CRTs on this bad boy. So understand this thing is big. It's heavy duty. And of course there is the price. This comes with a high price tag. You've got some premium materials here, as well as some really nice features, and they do not come cheap. As well, this is a really unique setup, and there's really not a whole lot else like it on the market. And of course, there is the assembly. And for me personally, not a huge con. It's what I expected when I got this thing but there are people out there who want that out of the box experience. They want to buy their arcade stick. They want to take it home. They want to plug it in. They want to use it immediately. And I completely understand that they want to have their fun. That being said with this, there is going to be a little bit of time between getting this home, getting it set up and getting into your games. And my last thing on the list of cons, although some may not see it as such, and that is why I included it in the pros list those silent kwanba gravity buttons and they are really nice in some cases but in other cases it might distract from the experience of players who prefer that classic tactile feedback of the louder arcade buttons like those from sanwa so what's the bottom line with the kwanba 2009 arcade well it's definitely a solid piece of gear it's heavy duty, it feels like it can handle pretty much whatever you throw at it, and it's gonna be a great fit if you're looking for that classic arcade vibe. The silent controls are a nice touch if you're not a fan of the noisy buttons during late night gaming, but that can also be a turnoff for those who like the more tactile feedback of your standard Sanwa Crown Sand Duxa style buttons. This setup is great for anyone who loves to tinker thanks to its compatibility with multiple devices and customizable options. However, it's not the simplest on the market, so if you're new to gaming or prefer something that works straight out of the box, it might feel a bit more complex than some of their other offerings. It's not the cheapest option out there, but you're paying for quality, versatility, and features. If you're serious about gaming and you're looking for something that mimics the arcade experience without leaving home, the Kwanba 2009 could be a great investment. Just make sure you've got space to put this thing together and a nice spot for it to call home. And my final score, five out of five joysticks. Absolutely amazing. This thing is a banger despite the price. Absolutely incredible. What a piece of hardware. Kwanba knocked it out of the park with this one, and I had incredibly high expectations coming from the Dragon. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Definitely, definitely recommend as someone who is looking at those uh, knockoff Ulix machines and the Ulix clones, as well as kind of home arcade solutions, this is the one. Five out of five. Let's go. Kwanba 2009, incredible.